We're in a really bad financial position. In total, how many vacations do you take a year? Three. Okay, round up. Last year, we took about 10. <laughs> <laughs> I just like pulled from, made, like, made another loan to cover a credit card so we could go on our trip. Oh my. Okay. Okay. How do people making $12 an hour go on so many vacations? Third possibility, maybe Photoshop, maybe splitting one room with eight people. Regardless, it's not as luxurious as it may seem. How are people doing this? I see people online going on these extravagant vacations and buying like expensive things. And I am into my career and have a good job. And instead of going to Europe like I wanted to this summer, I went to the desert. One thing that I will never do, and no judgment to anyone who does this, I'm just saying it's something I would never do, is finance a vacation. How you feel on vacation. Because when I went into debt for vacation in college, I could not enjoy my vacation. It was so hard for me to enjoy my vacation because it's not like you're buying the flights or X, Y, and Z with debt. You're like, paying for everything on the vacation in debt. It's like your vacation is supposed to be fun and relaxing, but it's not fun and relaxing because you're stressed about all the money you spent. Sometimes I've been scrolling on social media and I've been asking myself, am I poor or everybody is just constantly in vacations? Honestly, I've been wondering like, what's the issue in my finances? Why I can go in vacation every other week like everybody else? Well, don't worry. You might be just in my category and be financially responsible because guess what most of those people are in vacation debt yes for somebody that care about their personal finances it don't make sense at all to go in debt for vacations but those people exist yes still in 2024 after all the financial lessons that we see in online there's still people taking debt to go in vacations so stop the frustrations. Let's look at this video and understand the reasoning of why people still take vacation debt and paying with their credit cards every time they have the opportunity to go in a dream destination. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nina Moyo. Please like, subscribe and comment and then let's discuss. I just like pulled from, made, like, made another loan to cover a credit card so we could go on our trip. Oh my, okay, okay. And I didn't tell him. What do you him. mean? Wait, why doesn't he get to know that? Why are we doing that without his knowledge? Oh. He thought you were pulling from an emergency fund. I thought that's even better, but actually, no, you said the trip was P planned. I was going to tell him. I just. Was, but you didn't. So I don't give a was. You didn't. Well, no, I didn't yeah. tell him. Huh? I Yeah, I didn't tell him. Why? Because, I mean, I was going to. But you didn't. I just didn't want him to stress about our trip. But now you're stressing about the trip, even though the trip is already done because you've borrowed on it and now you have to pay it off. You borrowed, you opened it, you took out a loan. What kind of loan? Uh, Uplift. Okay. No, no, yeah. No, Upstart was the loan I took Ups for the Upstart. card. Upstart, yeah. I took that out to pay off a credit card that was maxed out so that we could have spending on the card. Oh, my. That has nothing to do with, well, that has nothing to do with the vacation. Well, then what are you talking about? You Because that so just confused. contradicted your whole thing. I'm confused too. What are you saying? So, yeah, we did finance the vacation that we just took. From what? On what? It's like the pre-planned, like, like a firm, like one one of those. It's called Uplift. So, so you, Uplift you and loan Upstart. To pay off a credit card. Yeah, they're both two. I have both loans, an Upstart and Uplift. And loan. which one did you know about? And which one did you not or neither? Why? Why? When? When did you do this? The last week of the month before our trip. What month? September. Okay. The last week of September. Yes. You did this. Yes. I got a loan out and yeah. paid off a credit card that was maxed out. Yeah. Why? But like, why? Because that just... It's got my name too on it, or is it no, just, just yours? Mine. Because it's just mine. it affects us both, and that is not we, really a good feeling to have like, that go behind my back, you know? Yeah. But I didn't think you, I think you would understand why I did it. So I didn't figure you were going to be mad. Well, understand why you did it. You did it for the vacation. Correct. And are you mad? Yeah. Uh, Say, Matt, I'm pretty uh, disappointed. 
that's kind of a big thing. I thought we were low on funds, you know, during the month because we were taking out to pay for a trip instead of taking a loan to finance a trip is insane. So this girl was like, the cards are maxed out. We don't have any money. So, I mean, first of all, when you say cards are maxed out, I mean, that you, you, you spend all the money you had, so meaning your cash, and you spend all the money the bank is allowing you to take. So you're going and trying to find a third way to have more money. Isn't that the red flag? Don't you understand the first time that you don't have any money? Like you don't, you can't make it happen. You can't go to that trip. You don't have cash and even the bank money is gone. But you still took a low at a high interest rate to finance a trip. Oh my God, this is even worse. Than just like oh I'm gonna swipe my cards because maybe you have like some space maybe you have a zero percent card which is I don't still think is not right but you finance it oh my god my heartbeat oh I don't feel good it's not even my financial situation I don't feel good something is so wrong about the situation and the husband on the side that had no idea with like with what's going on you I, I don't know I feel this situation is so weird and so like crazy to me because I would never put myself in that situation like girl I, there's no trip in the world that is worth all this stress and all this work like you know how long apply for the loan get approved move the funds do the like how bad do you want it to go like what well, what's there like what was there that you needed to do all that for ah how do people making $12 an hour go on so many vacations? Bestie, I'm almost certain this isn't the type of answer you want, but it's the type of answer you're getting. Realistically, we don't teach financial literacy in high schools, so it's totally possible these folks are just not very financially literate, they don't have strong personal finance skills, and are taking on a bunch of debt to live these lavish lifestyles. Alternatively, they could have super rich parents who are funding the vacation or funding the rest of their life like rent and food so that they have this extra income to go on vacation. Third possibility, maybe Photoshop, maybe splitting one room with eight people. Regardless, it's not as luxurious as it may seem. Fourth possibility, they could have another source of income that you have no idea about. Just because they're making $12 an hour at one job doesn't mean that's all they're making. In our digital age, there's this constant sense of needing to keep up with the Joneses, but that may not be in your best financial interest. Make the right decision for you, start a sinking fund for your next trip, and you can follow me for more on money and finance. Oh my god, I agree so much with her. I think this video was important within my video for you guys to understand that it's not everybody that's going into debt. Some people are making seem like the vacation is so luxurious and so beautiful and so amazing like i used to do that when i was like less than 20 year old and trying to travel and stuff i took a bus to get there <laughs> nobody knows but i didn't fly i took a bus to get there I, well, I didn't went to the extent of lying and putting a flight and stuff like that that's crazy but definitely went to places and took the bus took the train took the cheaper option because hey i still wanted to go and i was a broke student you know what i mean um but some people get influenced by seeing their favorite person on social media or whoever they follow or their friends and be like oh they get to travel all the time they get to do all of these let me do the same let me get in debt no don't do it don't do that because you never know what's going on behind the scenes like people know how to lie she even talked about people like taking pictures in places and making it seem it's another place like you can think that somebody is so far away from the house where they just around the corner just taking some pictures so don't get influenced like that like just just have your own personality it's 2024 we can't let that like you know impact us so bad especially with our personal finances like this is so so important just think about yourself and like the future if you really really want to go somewhere but genuinely for yourself not just because you saw everybody is going there social media has influenced you just save the money take the time a trip no matter what trip you go you can still find a way to make it happen on like a fairly good budget if you think about it ahead of time and give yourself a year give yourself some time you don't have to go next month you don't gotta go next summer you can just plan your head and be like oh my god i want this 
South Africa Safari. And you know, it's going to be, I don't know, $3,000, $4,000 or something like that. I mean, I don't know. I'm just giving prices. Like, don't get at me in the comment because I said a Safari is $4,000. But just plan around it. Or you want to go to Paris, just plan around it. And just like, okay, I'm going to save every single month starting from now on. Two hundred dollars, a hundred dollars, no matter whatever space you have in your budget. If you still have space in your budget in twenty twenty four, and then save for the money and then make it happen. Do it that way, not the other way around. Don't anticipate the spending and then go back home and say, "Oh, I'm gonna refund whatever I spend over there." That's not how it works. Nope, because that debt's gonna stay there and stick on you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. We're in a really bad financial position. In total, how many vacations do you take a year? Three. Okay, round up. Last year, we took about 10. <laughs> <laughs> it's my math, exactly. I say, take whatever it is and triple it. However much you say you right. eat out, triple it. Right. However much you say you take vacation, <laughs> right. triple it. It yeah. never fails. Everybody, make a note. R Ramit's <laughs> rule number 318, <laughs> vacations. Yeah. Whatever you say you spend, triple it. This is like gross math. A vacation only counts if it was so many days, if it was out of the country, if it was like, I feel her on number three because she's probably like, well, we went to Mexico, we went to the DR and we went to, I don't know, Canada, right? The man is counting, well, we went to see your parents for Thanksgiving for a couple of days and then we went to see my parents for Christmas and then we went to that wedding in North Carolina and then we went to this uh, trip with the kids at Disneyland and like in girls math in your head it's like mm, those are no trip this is not vacations those are like mandatory things that you have to do like holidays and birthdays and things like that mandatory for you girl as long as you're taking a flight, a train, something else than your car, and you're sleeping in something else than your own bed, it's a vacation. It's a trip. It counts as I moved myself out of my environment, and I am not into my bed, and I'm not in my city. I'm not in my house. I'm not in the places that I usually go. It's a trip. It's a trip. No matter how far it is, even if it's an hour away, it's a trip. So girls might is like, no, nah, it's not a trip, but I feel you on you, my girl. I feel you, but I'm sorry. You're the Lulu. You are the Lulu. Your husband is saying the truth. You took 10 trips and now all of them and your credit card. Because for you, it feels like it's only only three, only only three big ones. Like really like, oh yeah, yeah. I, I completely understand the logic, but that's not how it works. How are people doing this? I see people online going on these extravagant vacations and buying like expensive things and i am into my career and have a good job and instead of going to europe like i wanted to this summer i went to the desert and camped on blm land because it's free with friends and it was a great time but like how are people doing this are you just like in mad debt and i don't know about it like what are people doing everything is so freaking expensive one thing that I will never do, and no judgment to anyone who does this, I'm just saying it's something I would never do, is finance a vacation. So basically, before we even leave, before we even book, I already have the cash, it's already earmarked, and I will use a card to book the airline tickets, to book the hotel, but as soon as the charge hits my account, I'm going in and I'm paying it off in full. And the main reason why I do it this way is because, you know, when I go on vacation, it's I want it to be a relaxing experience. Not only relaxing while I'm there, but also when I come home, you know, I want to be refreshed. I want to be stress-free. I want to like live off of this high for as long as possible. And for me personally, if I leave a relaxing vacation and come home to thousands of dollars of debt with no way to really pay it off, that's gonna it's almost like the vacation is null and void because now I'm stressing about that this kind of reminds me of this time years ago I was in a restaurant and our waitress she was working there part-time in the evenings and on the weekends and we got to talking and she was saying how the reason why she had this part-time job is because she had did I think it was like two or three months in Europe and she had put everything on a credit card so now she was working to pay off the charges and if you were to ask her if it was worth it doing it that way she probably would say yes but i just know me personally it would stress me out way too much one thing that i will i have a question for the people that go into debt for a vacation now i'm not judging anyone i 1000 percent have gone into debt for vacation 
which sounds crazy, I know, but I'm in front of you guys because I've made poor financial decisions in my life. Not anymore, haven't made any bad decisions in the last five years financially, but I have made poor decisions. And going into debt for a vacation was definitely one of those bad decisions. I will say this was like college age, you know, like I have not done it in forever. Anyway, I wanna know how you guys feel about it, like how you feel on vacation. Because when I went into debt for a vacation in college, I could not enjoy my vacation. It was so hard for me to enjoy my vacation because it's not like you're buying the flights or X, Y, and Z with debt. You're like paying for everything on the vacation in debt. It's like your vacation is supposed to be fun and relaxing, but it's not fun and relaxing because you're stressed about all the money you spent. So I think I went on one vacation while I was in debt and got into more debt. And I was like, that was the dumbest thing. Anyway, I'm just curious. Do you guys like feel that guilt? And like, is it just you brush it off and you're just like, whatever, I deserve a vacation? Or are you like, do you feel guilty? Like I'm telling you by the end of it, I'm like, I couldn't even enjoy my vacation because of the anxiety I had about digging myself into more debt doing this. Anyway, no judgment here. I'm just curious because like I've been there. I've done that. But like I said, I just could not enjoy the vacation at all. So like I'm, I will never do that again. I'm here to relax and not stress. Now, when I was paying off my debt, I guess I still kind of am, but like my all my credit cards, things like that. It's not that we wouldn't go on vacation, the rule of thumb was that we could never go into debt for vacation. And we had to do that vacation cheap as shit. Like for example, we went on a cruise like December of 2022. That's crazy, that really wasn't that long ago. I was in a bunch of credit card debt. Of course, we just moved across the country and we went on a cruise and the, you had to make as cheap as possible, meaning we had to like stay in the stateroom. We couldn't like upgrade any of our dinners, nothing like that. We did get to decide at like one excursion and it really wasn't even an excursion, but like one thing to do. So anyway, if you're in debt and you're like, no, I deserve a vacation or whatever, at the very least, at the very minimal, don't go into debt for that vacation, okay? At the very least, do it as cheap as possible and like save up the money for it or like pay for it with cash. So that way you can like enjoy it a little bit. But yeah, going into debt for a vacation, especially when you like went to debt for that vacation because you probably were in a lot of other debt. Like you're desperate when you go into debt for vacation. But like, like I said, been there, done that. Is it the smartest decision? Absolutely not, but I totally understand it. Essentially what I'm saying, just at the very least, don't let the vacation put you into even more debt. But yeah, <laughs> did that one time, paid for a vacation. I probably was 20 years old, paid for a vacation on debt and it was horrible. I, I'm telling you, I'm like, uh, 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 uh. And the vacation was cheap, to be honest. I think it was like $700, but it was $700 I did not have. Anyway, remember this because I know spring break and like summer is kind of coming up. There's nothing wrong with family vacation. But like I said, if you are in debt, don't go into more debt for this vacation. Like at all, just save up the money, pay cash for it. And whatever that vacation is, you got to do it as cheap as possible. Give yourself the best of both worlds. But please learn from my mistake. No one, no one needs to go into even, a lot of people do it though. Trust me, a lot of people do it. Even, I even saw some ads for like banks and stuff. I don't know specifically which ones, but come get a loan for your vacation. I'm like, a loan for your vacation? But honestly, at the end of the day, a loan probably would be better than putting on your credit card because the interest rate's a lot lower. Please don't do that though. I have a question for the people that go into... Okay, so in the last two videos, you can see it's the same thing as the same recommendation. Don't do it from people who did it and really don't recommend to finance your vacation. And I will say also another thing. Do things that are your level. It's not because we've seen everybody being in first class right now and going on like these expensive hotels and all those things. Don't do everything that people do because it sounds sexy and sounds beautiful. Of course it sounds sexy and beautiful. Of course we all want to go in those expensive hotels, beautiful places and everything. But you can still have a beautiful trip with less means. Book an Airbnb that is like a little bit cheaper than the hotel average in the area. Trying to find alternative uh, way to, of transportation don't always take the flights if there is option for trains and buses and maybe even like share rides and um, things that are like not the most comfortable but what the point is to get to your destination if you really want it that bad do it in an economical way but if you know you can't handle doing it in a like less expensive way just wait until you get the money to actually buy that business seat that premium seat that premium hotel or like whatever level of travel that you want to experience because otherwise you're going to set yourself back up so much by spending that money into something that 
is not bringing anything for you financially and i'm not saying that you should never travel if you can't afford it or anything i'm just saying that do it in the means and the level you are in right now so it's not setting you back up financially for a long 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 time because those interest adds up so quickly it's insane one day you you paying zero percent the next you are 30 you don't even understand when you get there and then every time you start to put money on it it's never going down because you're only paying interest and fees and never really much on your principal which is super sad so there's other options definitely to um have nice trips and if not just don't do it stay home <laughs> Anyways, I had a lot of fun uh, recording this video. If you learned something, please let me know in the comment section. If you've ever been in debt to actually uh, go on vacation or make a trip or something like that, put your story in the comment section as well. I would love to hear it. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.